Good morning, chefs. You are now tuned in to the Chef Hour News right here on the Chef's Hour channel on YouTube. We are starting this fun and exciting show right now. Yes, we are back live here in the studio here today, and we have a fun and exciting news uh, show for you today as well. We are going to be talking about today is um, mainly about what's going on with uh, COVID-19 and what the um, administration is doing about to help uh, food-wise. And also, too, like we're uh, farmers are having a struggle or having a hard time trying to get their uh, products to the grocery store as well due to the, uh, the pandemic outbreak as well. So, with that, the first thing to start out with is the na uh, is na the nation's food supply chain is actually facing challenges. We are going to be talking about the farmers first. And so Smithville uh, is closing more plants over to COVID-19. They had closed down two plants due to uh, confirmed uh, cases within their plants. Um, they are looking to close down as many uh, as three more in the next month or so uh, due to, uh, due to uh, the issues that are going on with that. Uh, farmers are increasingly worried if their meat and produce will be uh, delivered to the stores. Uh, a lot of farmers are actually losing money. Uh, they're actually, especially the milk farmers, uh, they're, or the dairy farmers, I should say, they're dumping out their dairy, their milk, um, that are just stored on the farm because they're going bad. Uh, they're trying to get rid of it and see what they can do to, um, to get it to the consumer itself, whether it, it's doing it, the process it's, uh, on their own or are they just are trying to find a way to get it to the consumer at the grocery store or the point of sale. Uh, with that, stores are having a hard time keeping up with the historic demands that we are facing every day. Uh, we're facing a high demand in the consumer market right now that is really devastating now because we have a, a national food uh, a national food system rather than a local food system and these are many many reasons why that there is a um breaking points rather uh in the system itself that should be more on a local localized food system level than we see now with the national system and we're seeing that now in real time uh, what is going on? Why this is not an, an, an actual, it, it's a good system in a way. It gives everybody jobs and stuff, but it's not a, a self-sustaining system. And with that, the public is also facing hardship financially uh, as we're all out of work due to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, as we have no money to spend. I myself, uh, I just got my uh, back pay from the federal government uh, for missing work for three weeks. And uh, I'm like, I have other stuff I need to put that towards and everything else. And with that, and plus we're getting these stimulus checks and everything from the federal government, we're worried about what we need to do. What I also would like for you to do and what um, the actual stimulus package is for is to go out to the small business, go out to the small mom and pops, go to your local uh, bakery, go to your local restaurant that you really like and actually go and spend money there, Put, give them the money because later on in the show, I'm going to be talking about how they're going, uh, how these small mom and pop restaurants might not actually make it due to this uh, because they're actually really suffering because of what's going on right now. So next up on our list is the U.S. U.S. has announced a 19 billion dollars, excuse me, uh, 19 billion dollar coronavirus aid for farmers uh, food buys for the poor. 
So with this, the U. Um, President Donald Trump has said yesterday on Friday that he is announcing a nineteen dollar, nineteen billion dollar relief program to help U.S. farmers cope with the impact of coronavirus, including sixteen billion indirect payments to producers, mass and mass um, purchases of meat, dairy, vegetables, and other products. So with that, uh, President Trump has stated. American agriculture has been hit hard, has been hard hit. Um, like most of America, with the coronavirus, and President Trump is standing with our farmers, and all f Americans are m to make sure that we are all through this national emergency. Okay, uh, President Trump has said that along with the Agricultural Secretary Sonny Perdue uh, at a White House news conference uh, conference yesterday afternoon. On Friday, uh, the $16 billion in direct payments to farmers and ranchers will include $9.6 billion for the livestock industry, with $5.1 billion for the cattle, $2.9 billion for the dairy, and $1.6 for the hawks. According to the statement released late Friday by U.S. Senator John Hoven, of North Dakota Chairman and Senate uh, Agriculture Appropriations Committee. Um, this billion dollar uh, relief, $19 billion relief fund will be um, executed shortly. Uh, we don't know how, how long this is gonna take um, to get to all the farmers, but we're hoping very, very soon. And in addition, a $3.9 billion will be paid uh, to row crop producers. Okay, to our produce producers that grow corn, that grow your onions, your, your spinach, your leafy greens, and all that other stuff, uh, $2.1 billion for specialty crop farmers, and $5 million for other crops, according to, uh, according to the statement. The payments are capped at $250,000 per individual farmer or entity. So um, in other words, um, so the $250,000 will be going to the farmer, or to um, the, an actual farming business. And with that, um, a lot of these small farmers are, you know, as much as they need this too, and I hope that they do get this, uh, but I do see that with that statement saying that $250,000 per individual farmer or entity, so meaning a farming business, um, it could fall through the cracks where these big farmers, the big farming businesses will actually get um, a $250,000 bonus, which they don't really need because they have a lot of money uh, for sec. So, um, so with that being said, Chef, uh, I am doing a quick kind of show today and I'm running through this rather quickly today uh, as I am still playing catch up from the week. Uh, with that being said, let me go ahead and take a short break here, a uh, very rather short break with this. The general public is uh, facing a hunger fear. Uh, food banks is seeing a surging demand across the U.S. amid coronavirus, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, de desperation is growing by the day for Americans who lost their jobs over coronavirus pandemic. An estimate of 17 million people could now be facing hunger in addition to those who already battle it every day. Uh, Feeding America, the national organization linking U.S. food banks, estimate it will need a total of additional total of 1.4 billion dollars to increase uh, the needs over the next six months. Uh, the National Guard is helping out uh, at the moment in every town, in every capacity and city, to help in the midst of the global pandemic. Uh, so. As we can see that this is not going to be something that can be just wrapped up in a day. It can be just a snap of the fingers and it'll be done. Um, we're going to be seeing this within the next six months to a year. It could take up to five years too um, as well to see the actual normalcy come back into play. 
and we're going to be seeing a lot of transformation and transitions into other uh, entities as well. Not maybe not more on a national uh, national scale of the food system. Maybe it'd be more on a, a local scale, like a local a local sustainable food system, which is self sustaining, man. As we can see now, and I don't want to get into this too much, but as we see now, we see that there are cracks, there are breaking points. And I do mention this in a presentation uh, called Food Systems 101 uh, that I will be premiering at a later date on this channel, uh, on this channel of how many different breaking points there are in this. And if you, those of you saw that um, the presentation already, already know that there are seven breaking points in a, in a, food, a food system. So that we are experiencing now uh, with how the demand is not being met because uh, a lot of the distribution plants are being shut down because they can no longer perform their duties because of a contagious uh, virus. So with, with this pandemic. And with that being said, uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on over to our next one. So Trump's restaurant recovery plan, is it built for the restaurants or built on fast food? Trump's group of restaurant industry advisors is primarily uh, comprised of chain CEOs along with smattering of restaurant tours with fine dining empires and industry group leaders. Okay, the chain restaurants, not really my forte but i really like how he is uh, implementing fine dining empires um most of which are uh, wolfgang puck thomas keller are on board with this as well as will be mentioned uh, uh, very shortly here <clears throat> so the restaurant industry is successfully lobbied for a loophole that allows chains to apply for small business loans so Um, Ruth, Chris, and Potbelly is receiving a combined $40 million in PPP loans, in the small business loans. And the lack of independent restaurant represents is especially disturbing in the light of the fact that experts say smaller independent restaurants will have the hardest time surviving the coronavirus pandemic. So, as I mentioned before, with all of this, um, definitely go out and support your local restaurants. Go out and support that local bakery that you love. Go even to, if you have a butcher in town, go to your butcher. Go to your Italian deli. Go, go to your delis in town. Uh, go and support these small mom pop places because they truly need it. As we can tell, that $40 million combined is going to Shake Shack and Ruth Chris alone. Okay? So, is it really built on um, the fast food industry or is it built on the restaurant tours itself? So this week, yes, this week Trump announced the formation of the Great American Economic Revival Industry Group, the restaurant in, for the restaurant industry. The group is one of number of industry representative organized to advise the White House. Uh, yes, on reopening the, uh, the U.S. during the coronavirus uh, pandemic. The council is made up of men who led organizations including Trump's restaurant, uh, yes, okay, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong page here that I have. Uh, so these organizations are, are including uh, uh, one regional chain manager, uh, so uh, Ray Washburn, uh, the, he's the CEO of M Crowd Restaurant, who was uh, vice chair of the Trump Victory Committee uh, and has donated thousands of dollars to Trump and the Republic, uh, Republican Party uh, so we have also have five fast food chains, uh, McDonald's, uh, Chick-fil-A, Taco Bell, KFC, uh, parent company Yum Brands, uh, KFC's parent company Yum Brands, I should say, uh, Wendy's, Arby's, and Sonic's 
uh, parent company uh, inspired brands. So with that, we have several other chains as well. Uh, CEOs from Olive Garden, uh, parent company of Darden, Subway, uh, Outback Steakhouse Company uh, of Blooming Brands, Papa John's, Waffle, uh, Waffle House, and Starbucks, plus Jimmy John's founder. That's pretty amazing considering I haven't heard Jimmy John doing something in quite some time now. So, um, but anyway, the three beverage and packaged food giants, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Kraft are joining in on this as well. Uh, three industrial groups, the National um, Restaurant Association, the NRA, the National Association of Wholesale Distributors, and the International Franchise uh, Association, IFA. Five of four fine dining empires. This is what I like about this. Wolfgang Puck, Thomas Keller, John, um, John George's, uh, Vod, I'm not French, but I might botch his name, Von Jerichen, and Daniel Bulot, Bulot, or Balud. That's not, I believe that's French as well. While many franchises at major chains are small businesses, none of these franchises were representatives as individuals and organization. And as seen by McDonald's, recent tensions between franchisers and franchisees uh, franchisees are the priorities of two groups are not always aligned. Chains have received at least $40 million in small business loans. $40 million in small business loans. With that, say, uh, with that, Chef, I'm going to take a short break here, really, really quick break here, and we're going to come back and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss how how much, uh, the, we'll discuss more about this topic as well, uh, with the chains receiving at least $40 million in small business loans. This is crazy. These are for small businesses. So with that being said, Chef, I'll catch you, Chef, in a quick moment. Chefs, uh, we're going to continue talking about the chains having at least $40 million in small business loans. As chains advise Trump on the recovery plan, some major brands are also receiving small business loans. While the Paycheck Protection Program is aimed at small businesses with fewer than 500 employees, Hotel and restaurant chains successfully lobby for an exception that allows any chain with fewer than 500 workers per location to apply for a loan. That is a loophole, for sure. Uh, I don't, I don't like this at all. How this loophole is in effect? Uh, these small business loans are for small businesses. Um, with some mega brands. Uh, that receive these small business loans are including Ruth Chris's Steakhouse. They received $20 million in loans. Uh, uh, Port Belly. Pop Belly has received $10 million. Uh, Shake Shack received $10 million as well. These br national brands, these chains are, are receiving these SBA loans, these small business loans. And to be honestly, to, to be honest, that is not fair for the small business either. So these big chain restaurants are taking all these money and they're drying up the fund for the small businesses. Hence the reason why we don't, uh, experts are saying that they don't think the small businesses are going to last um, after when reopening this because of how much debt they're going to be occurring when they reopen. So a small independent restaurants um, might be wiped out of coronavirus and the uh, might be wiped out by the coronavirus and the emphasis on chains isn't helping at all. Uh, they're not contributing to the, to the local, uh, to, the, to the community restaurants, to the small mom and pop places at all. 
uh, there's going to be a closure that come back. I continually saw my heart goes out to, the in, uh, to these independents. Raising uh, King CEO Todd's graves told, business, uh, told the Business Insider on Thursday, these are restaurants that have soul. They have character. Their crew members are incredible. And some of them aren't going to be uh, able to re-emerge with themselves. So with that, restaurants are going to be the one that struggle the most, especially the small mom and pop places. Um, again, uh, I can't stress this out enough. When we reopen the economy, go out and support your local, your small mom and pop places. Go out and support those places. If you have a certain bakery that you really love to go to, go to that place. Go to that place and buy a cake, buy a loaf of bread, buy cookies, buy whatever. A, a small amount is very helpful as well if you cannot afford to go out and get a lot of baked goods. If you go out to a restaurant, definitely go out to a restaurant, okay? I myself um, am all for eating in, but also at the same time, I love going out to restaurants, especially local restaurants either in my area or someplace I want, really want to try to when I go uh, to another area, uh, when I go on vacation or something like that, I always try out the small mom and pop places, okay? Of course, yes, um, anywhere you go, you're like, when I'm out doing on a work run or something like that, I'm in a different area, I really don't want to go to a small place, I just want to get something really quick. Uh, in Jersey, we have something called Wawa, which I'm really uh, a big fan of, uh, so I go around to Wawa and grab something. But, that's besides the point. So that is what that is for if you want something quick and you really don't know what you want, uh, you always go for what you always get. So, but what I'm actually saying is that go out and support these local mom pop places so they can have the support from their community to survive the post effects of this pandemic. With that being said, chefs, it is time for the food recalls of the week here on Chef Hour News. So chefs, uh, the food recalls of this week, I'm going to be giving you the top three food recalls of the week. Uh, this is off of the foodsafetynews.com where I get, where the Chef Hour gets its food recalls uh, every day, every week, every month, every year. Um, this is the, one of the main websites that um, local restaurateurs, and, uh, I shouldn't say local restaurateurs, but restaurateurs and entrepreneurs go to that are in the food industry to get their recalls to see what products they have, that if it is on the recall list, so this way they don't feed it to the general public. It is for your safety and it is for our safety as well, uh, for myself. Uh, being a chef in the industry, uh, we don't want to be, it, it hurts us to be serving a food that could be contaminated with something that could potentially hurt you. Uh, with that being said, so top number one on our list today, uh, this recall was announced yesterday, April 17th, on fr uh, which is Friday. New recall of frozen shredded coconut issued for more than two years after FDA warning. So a new recall of frozen food shredded coconut is uh, connected, connected, uh, connected to the Food and Drug Administration's 2018 warning about multiple salmonella infections linked to this product. The Evershing uh, International Trading Company on April 15 recalled the uh, coconut, coconut flakes. So the second one is our is a CFIA expands semi-soft cheese recall over listeria monocytogens uh, contamination. This was uh, announced on April 16th of this year. Uh, a food recall warning issued on April 5th has been updated to include additional distributions information. Um, this additional information was identified during a secret, uh, a recent Canadian Food Inspection Agency's food safety investigation. So, and our last one is our company recall. Uh, company recalls a sausage and brats uh, from retailers in two states. So, these states include 
which is not listed. Usually they do list it on the, yeah. Okay, so the Joet Farms Corporation in Bloom North, Canada is recalling more than 42,500 pounds of raw pork trimmings uh, that were not presented for important re reinspection into the United States, according to the USC Food uh, FSIS, the Food, Serv uh, Food Safety in Inspection Service. Uh, the problem was uh, discovered during routine FSIS uh, surveillance activities of imported products. According to the recall notice, there or have been no confirmed reports of adverse reaction due to consumption of these products. So with this concern, uh, two states have been, and here they are. So these sausage and brats were shipped to retail locations in Illinois and Wisconsin. I'm actually surprised that they actually put this in lower in the recall notice than usually they put it up top, but um, that's besides the point. With that being chef, that is all the recalls for today. Uh, that is the top three recalls of the week. Um, with that being said, my treat to you as uh, being on the show from the very beginning and just watching the show. Uh, usually it is like an hour long. Today I cut it back a little short. I ran through it very quickly and I do apologize for that. With that being said, Chef, it is the moment, the time for the recipe of the week. So it is time for the recipe of the week here today. I am featuring a spring salmon. This is actually something I did back in culinary school, uh, back in, oh man, vocational school. So it had to be in 2013 or 2014, never worked on it, 2014, um, back in uh, Ocean County, Votech. And with that, we did a string salmon. It was uh, sort of similar to what we did with our uh, rainbow uh, trout that we do. Um, but this is uh, typically uh, a nice light uh, meal. Uh, typically, I like this in the springtime. So in this uh, simple, quick, and perfect weeknight dinner, it includes a two-pound uh, salmon filet. I recommend using a fresh filet uh, that is either wild caught or locally raised. Um, for some reason, um, when you get it, from a different um, manufacturer from out of the country. I'm not saying it's not good, they are, the fish is good, but normally you don't know what they do with it. It just doesn't come out as good. Uh, so with a fresh local product, uh, this dish really, uh, really comes out. And you need, with this, with the two, uh, two pound filet of salmon, you also need a uh, tablespoon of olive oil a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, or you can use one small clove of garlic, one teaspoon of dried thyme, a teaspoon of dried parsley, a, G a teaspoon of dried basil, one green onion sliced. Uh, you could use a green onion, but I remember we use a Vidalia onion, so it came out a little bit more sweeter. Uh, and a tablespoon of sherry vinegar. Um, Typically, I don't use sherry vinegar with this recipe. Uh, this is the recipe that I had from school. Uh, you can use an optional of sherry wine, uh, which also it gives it a great flavor. And also with that, you could um, make um, uh, almost like a gravy or an au jus uh, after the fish is done cooking. Uh, so the instructions are, in a small mixing bowl, combine olive oil, garlic powder, thyme, parsley, green onion, and sherry vinegar. Lay the salmon filet on a cast iron skillet, side down. Uh, place the cast iron skillet in the oven and turn on the broiler high and cook for about five minutes. Remove from the oven and spread contents uh, from the mixing bowl on top of the salmon. Place back in the oven on broil, uh, on broil for five to seven minutes or until you easily flake the flesh with a fork. Remove from the oven and allow to cool slightly uh, for about a minute, and then you can uh, you, uh, you can serve it from there. 
Uh, so with any type of meat, when it comes out, you don't want to typically uh, eat it right out of the oven because it's too hot. And also the flavors uh, haven't really popped out when it's, when it's scolding hot like that. So you want the meat to rest. So this way all the juices can come back inside of it, that flavorful juice to lock in there. Uh, to give it a more of a flavor for burst than more of a bland type of flavoring of the fish along with the flavoring of the juice of the juices so with that uh at school what we did um a little trick if you don't have a broiler so you have a oven and a broiler separate but you don't have a broiler at all uh so if you have a broiler separate definitely put it in the oven and then put the, the sauce on top and put it in that uh, the broiler itself. And if you don't have a broiler, what you could do is, um, if you have a conventional oven, definitely uh, use the conventional oven, um, besides the baking method. Uh, but with that, if you don't have a conventional oven, you can just typically put it back in there for five more minutes, and it should be ready, uh, nice golden brown. Uh, I shouldn't say golden brown, but it should have nice coloring on it uh, for what I sh should be saying. And with that being, she being said, chefs, um, that it, it is time to conclude our show today. Uh, I apologize um, for posting so late today. I did have a lot of technical difficulties this morning. Uh, I wanted to do a live show. Uh, but with that coming with some difficulties on my end, uh, I could not produce uh, as I wanted to. So that being said, Chef, I will be on air next Saturday. Uh, most likely same format, uh, same chef time, same chef place right here, 10 a.m. next Saturday. And I'll see you, chefs, next time on my next video. And you stay safe. Stay safe, stay healthy, and support your local businesses. Take care, chefs. Hey, chefs, don't forget to hop on over to the official Chef Hour store where you can get your Chef Hour radio merchandise. Chef Hour news merchandise is still to come. And you can even check out our old uh, Chef's Hour merchandise that we had back on air at 107.9 WRML. Pretty cool logo there, so don't forget to go check that out. Link will be in the description. And keep uh, stopping in and checking back soon because there is more uh, merchandise to come. If you purchase today to April 30th, you'll be able to receive a 25% discount off with just Home Chef 25 as your promo code at checkout. Again, that promo code is Home Chef 25. I'll catch you chefs later.